It was a crisp autumn evening, the air carrying the faint scent of fallen leaves and impending change, when I stumbled upon the Craigslist ad that would soon become the gateway to a labyrinth of terror. The title seemed innocuous enough. Furnished room for rent, perfect for students or young professionals. As a recent college graduate navigating the murky waters of post-graduation life in the bustling city, the promise of affordable housing was akin to stumbling upon an oasis in the desert. Little did I know, however, that behind the seemingly benign words lay a sinister web waiting to ensnare its unsuspecting prey. Upon contacting the poster, a man by the name of James, I was met with an air of warm enthusiasm that bordered on overzealous. He described the room in vivid detail, spacious, well-lit, and conveniently located near public transportation hubs. Despite a nagging sense of unease gnawing at the edges of my consciousness, I found myself captivated by the allure of the offer, willing to overlook any potential red flags in my desperate quest for stable accommodation. Arrangements were promptly made for me to visit the apartment the following day. As I made my way to the address provided, a creeping sense of foreboding began to take root in the depths of my psyche. The neighborhood through which I traversed was a study in desolation, with boarded-up windows and graffiti-covered walls serving as silent witnesses to the decay that had befallen the area. Still, I pressed on, driven by a potent cocktail of determination and naivety. James greeted me at the door with a disarming smile that did little to assuage the growing apprehension knotting in the pit of my stomach. He was a middle-aged man, with graying hair and a slight stoop to his shoulders. Though his demeanor appeared friendly enough, there was an underlying tension in the air that set my nerves on edge, a primal instinct warning me of unseen dangers lurking beneath the surface. Stepping into the apartment, I was immediately struck by the dilapidated state of my surroundings. The furnishings were threadbare and a musty odor hung in the air like a dense fog. Despite the sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I followed James into the room he had advertised clinging to the hope that it would offer some semblance of refuge amidst the chaos of my uncertain existence. The room itself was a small, windowless chamber with barely enough space to accommodate the essentials. The walls were adorned with peeling wallpaper, and the single bed was adorned with faded linens that spoke volumes of neglect. Though alarm bells clamoured for my attention, I convinced myself that I could make do with what was offered. After all, Beggars couldn't afford to be choosers, or so the saying went. James wasted no time in extolling the virtues of the apartment, painting a picture of idyllic domesticity that seemed utterly divorced from the grim reality before me. Yet, as he spoke, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. His eyes lingered on me a fraction too long, and his smile seemed strained around the edges, as if concealing a deeper, more sinister truth that lay just beneath the surface. Unable to ignore the gnawing sense of unease any longer, I politely declined James' offer and made to leave. But before I could reach the door, his demeanor shifted, his friendly facade crumbling to reveal the true depths of his depravity. You can't leave. He spat, his voice dripping with malice. You belong to me now. Panic surged through me like a tidal wave as I realized the gravity of my situation. I was alone trapped in a stranger's apartment with no means of escape. With trembling hands, I reached for my phone, praying for a miracle. But James was quicker, snatching the device from my grasp with a cruel smirk. No one can help you now, he taunted, his grip like a vice around my wrist. In that moment, terror consumed me completely, rendering me powerless against the twisted machinations of fate. I was at the mercy of a madman with no hope of salvation in sight. Hours stretched into eternity as I languished in captivity, my mind a maelstrom of fear and desperation. Every creak of the floorboards, every whispered threat sent shivers down my spine, a constant reminder of the nightmare from which I could not awaken. But just when all hope seemed lost, salvation arrived in the form of an unexpected savior. A neighbor, drawn by the sound of my cries, alerted the authorities to my plight. In a flurry of activity, police officers swarmed the apartment, their presence a beacon of hope in the darkness. 
James was apprehended without incident, his facade of normalcy shattered to reveal the true depths of his depravity. It was revealed that he had lured countless victims into his web of deceit, preying upon the vulnerable with impunity. As I emerged from the confines of that wretched apartment, battered but unbroken, I knew that I would carry the scars of my ordeal for the rest of my days. But I also knew that I was one of the lucky ones, spared from a fate far worse than death. My Craigslist horror story serves as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk beneath the surface of everyday life. It is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of hope in the face of unspeakable darkness. And though the memories may haunt me for years to come, I refuse to let them define me. For I am a survivor, forged in the crucible of adversity, and I will not be silenced by the shadows of the past. In the vast expanse of the digital realm, where screens flicker with endless possibilities and the click of a mouse can transport you anywhere, there exists a shadowy corner where danger lurks beneath the guise of convenience. This is where our tale unfolds, a story that begins innocently enough, but quickly spirals into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. The Prologue Meet Sarah, a recent college graduate embarking on the journey of adulthood with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Like many in her position, Sarah found herself in need of a reliable mode of transportation to navigate the bustling city streets. With limited funds at her disposal, she turned to the vast labyrinth of online classifieds in search of a bargain. Sarah stumbled upon an ad for a vintage motorcycle, a sleek machine that seemed to beckon to her from the screen. Despite her initial hesitations, she couldn't shake the allure of the open road and the wind in her hair. With a sense of adventure coursing through her veins, she reached out to the seller, a mysterious figure who went by the name of Max. Their correspondence was brief and cryptic, with Max providing scant details about the motorcycle beyond its make and model. They arranged to meet in a secluded alleyway on the outskirts of town, a decision Sarah would later come to regret. The Encounter As Sarah arrived at the designated meeting spot, a sense of apprehension settled over her like a heavy cloak. The alleyway was shrouded in darkness, illuminated only by the faint glow of distant streetlights. The air was thick with the scent of rain, promising an impending storm. She waited nervously, her heart pounding in her chest as she scanned the shadows for any sign of movement. Just as she was beginning to doubt her decision to come, a figure emerged from the darkness, his silhouette illuminated by the soft glow of a nearby lamppost. Max was taller than she had imagined, his features obscured by the shadows. Despite her reservations, Sarah approached him with cautious optimism, her senses on high alert. There was something about Max that set her on edge, a feeling she couldn't quite shake. The Transaction As Sarah inspected the motorcycle, a sense of unease settled over her like a dark cloud. The bike seemed to gleam in the dim light, its chrome accents catching the faint glow of the street up. But beneath its polished exterior lurked a sense of foreboding, a feeling that there was something hidden beneath the surface. Max watched her intently, his eyes unreadable behind the veil of darkness. With a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, Sarah realized that she had stumbled into something far more sinister than a simple transaction. Before she could react, Max made his move, his intentions becoming clear in an instant. With a surge of adrenaline, Sarah sprang into action, her instincts taking over as she fought to defend herself against her assailant. The Escape In the chaos that followed, Sarah's world narrowed to a singular focus. Escape with every ounce of strength she possessed, she fought back against Max's relentless assault, her mind racing with fear and desperation. As she broke free from his grasp, Sarah knew that she had only one chance to get away. With a burst of speed, she sprinted towards the safety of her car, the sound of Max's enraged shouts echoing in her ears like a distant thunderstorm. With trembling hands, she fumbled for her keys her heart hammering in her chest as she struggled to unlock the door. In a moment of sheer terror, 
She glanced over her shoulder to see Max closing in on her, his eyes burning with a feral intensity. With a final push, Sarah managed to slam the door shut and start the engine, the roar of the motorcycle drowning out the sound of her pounding heart. With a screech of tires, she peeled out of the alleyway, leaving Max behind in a cloud of dust and exhaust. The Aftermath In the days that followed, Sarah found herself grappling with the aftermath of her harrowing ordeal. The memories of that night haunted her every waking moment, leaving her feeling raw and vulnerable. She reported the incident to the authorities, but without any concrete evidence. There was little they could do to apprehend her attacker. Haunted by the trauma of her experience, Sarah became hypervigilant, her once carefree spirit replaced by a pervasive sense of paranoia. Every shadow seemed to conceal a potential threat, and she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, even in the safety of her own home. Conclusion The tale of Sarah's terrifying encounter serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk within the digital abyss. In a world where anonymity reigns supreme, it's all too easy to fall prey to predators masquerading as sellers or buyers. But amidst the darkness, there is also resilience and strength, as Sarah's determination to survive against all odds demonstrates. As she navigates the uncertain waters of recovery, Sarah vows never to let her guard down again, to trust her instincts and heed the warning signs that she once ignored. For in the digital realm, as in life, the line between safety and danger is often perilously thin, and it's up to each of us to tread carefully, lest we find ourselves lost in the shadows forever. Chapter 1. The Innocent Search In a bustling city where opportunities beckoned from every corner, Sarah found herself at a crossroads. Fresh out of college and burdened with the weight of student loans, she realized that the prospect of living alone in a tiny apartment was financially untenable. With a heavy heart, she turned to Craigslist in search of a roommate, hoping to find someone who would not only share the burden of rent, but also bring a sense of companionship to her solitary existence. After meticulously crafting an ad that highlighted her requirements, a non-smoker, titty, and responsible individual, Sarah anxiously hit the post button and waited for responses to flood her inbox. To her relief, the messages started pouring in, each one offering a glimpse into the lives of potential roommates. Amidst the sea of inquiries, one message stood out like a beacon of hope, a polite and articulate email from a man named Michael. Chapter 2. The Facade Unravels At first glance, Michael seemed like the perfect roommate. He was courteous, well-spoken, and shared Sarah's penchant for cleanliness, a trifecta of qualities that seemed too good to be true. However, as Sarah delved deeper into their email correspondence, cracks began to form in the facade of perfection. There was something unsettling about the overly formal tone of Michael's messages, a sense of detachment that sent shivers down her spine. Despite her misgivings, Sarah pushed aside her doubts, chalking them up to nerves and paranoia. After all, she reasoned, it was natural to feel apprehensive about inviting a stranger into her home. With a forced smile plastered on her face, she arranged to meet Michael in person at a nearby cafe, hoping to glean some semblance of trust from their face-to-face -face interaction. Chapter 3. The Meeting As Sarah sat nervously sipping her latte, she scanned the bustling cafe for any sign of Michael's arrival. Her heart skipped a beat when she spotted a tall figure striding confidently towards her, his piercing gaze locking onto hers with an intensity that made her squirm uncomfortably in her seat. It was Michael, or at least, someone who bore a striking resemblance to the man she had been corresponding with. With a forced smile, Sarah greeted him, a voice betraying none of the apprehension swirling in her mind. As they exchanged pleasantries, Michael's demeanor remained eerily composed, his gaze never wavering from her face. It was as if he was sizing her up, dissecting her every word and gesture with clinical precision. Chapter 4. The Offer Despite the unsettling nature of their encounter, Sarah found herself drawn to Michael's charm and charisma. 
he regaled her with tales of his travels and career successes, painting a picture of a man who had it all figured out. When the topic of rent came up, Michael surprised her with an unexpected offer. He was willing to pay double the asking price in exchange for exclusive use of the apartment on weekends. The offer seemed too good to refuse, a tempting proposition that would alleviate Sarah's financial worries and grant her the freedom to pursue her own interests outside of the confines of her cramped apartment. With a sense of exhilaration coursing through her veins, she accepted Michael's offer without a second thought, oblivious to the danger lurking beneath the surface. Chapter 5 The Warning Signs In the days that followed, Sarah's excitement slowly gave way to trepidation as she began to notice subtle changes in Michael's behavior. He became increasingly possessive and controlling, demanding her undivided attention and forbidding her from having guests over without his explicit permission. His once charming demeanor morphed into something altogether more sinister, leaving Sarah feeling like a prisoner in her own home. Despite the warning signs glaring her in the face, Sarah was reluctant to confront Michael about his behavior, fearing the repercussions of angering him. Instead, she retreated into herself, tiptoeing around him like a mouse afraid to attract the attention of a hungry cat. It was only a matter of time before the fragile facade of normalcy shattered, plunging Sarah into a nightmare from which she might never awaken. Chapter 6 The Unraveling As weeks turned into months, Sarah found herself trapped in a downward spiral of fear and despair, a once bright future eclipsed by the suffocating presence of Michael in her life. He monitored her every move with hawk-like vigilance, his mere presence casting a shadow over her every waking moment. Try as she might to escape his clutches, Sarah found herself ensnared in a web of his making, her hopes of freedom fading with each passing day. It wasn't until she stumbled upon a hidden compartment in Michael's bedroom, a veritable treasure trove of incriminating evidence, that Sarah realized the true extent of the danger she was in. Amongst the clutter of newspaper clippings and handwritten notes lay a chilling manifesto detailing Michael's twisted obsession with her, his plans for their future together etched in blood-red ink. In that moment, Sarah knew that she had to act fast if she wanted to escape with her life intact. Chapter 7 the escape plan. With trembling hands, Sarah formulated a desperate plan to escape Michael's clutches once and for all. She confided in a trusted friend about her predicament, seeking refuge in their unwavering support and guidance. Together, they concocted a carefully orchestrated escape plan, meticulously plotting each step with the precision of a military operation. Under the cover of darkness, Sarah gathered her most prized possessions and made preparations to leave the apartment for good. With her heart pounding in her chest, she tiptoed past Michael's bedroom, praying that he remained blissfully unaware of her intentions. Every creak of the floorboard sounded like a death knell, threatening to betray her presence to her captor lurking in the shadows. Chapter 8 The Confrontation Just as Sarah was about to make her escape, she felt a cold hand clamp down on her shoulder, freezing her in her tracks. With a gasp of terror, she turned to face Michael, his eyes burning with a fiery intensity that sent chills down her spine. In that moment, all pretense of civility vanished, replaced by a raw, unbridled rage that threatened to consume them both. With a guttural roar, Michael lunged at Sarah, his fingers curled into claws as he sought to drag her back into the darkness from whence she came. But Sarah was not so easily defeated. With a strength born of desperation, she fought back with all the fury of a cornered animal, lashing out at her assailant with a ferocity that surprised even herself. Chapter 9 The Narrow Escape In the chaos that ensued, Sarah made a split-second decision to break free from Michael's grasp, their survival instincts kicking into overdrive as she fought tooth and nailed to escape his clutches. With adrenaline coursing through her veins, she sprinted towards the door, her heart pounding in her chest as she raced against time to reach safety. Behind her, she could hear Michael's enraged shouts echoing in the darkness, a chilling reminder of the danger she had narrowly escaped. As she emerged into the cool night air, Sarah felt a wave of relief wash over her, 
her lungs burning with exertion as she gulped down mouthfuls of oxygen. In that moment, she knew that she had cheated death by the narrowest of margins. A newfound freedom a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable horror. Chapter 10. The Aftermath In the aftermath of her harrowing ordeal, Sarah struggled to come to terms with the trauma of her experience. Nightmares plagued her sleep, their tendrils creeping into every corner of her consciousness like insidious vines seeking to ensnare her once more. But amidst the darkness, there glimmered a faint glimmer of hope, a beacon of light guiding her towards a brighter future. With the unwavering support of her loved ones, Sarah embarked on a journey of healing and self-discovery, determined to reclaim her sense of agency in a world that had once sought to rob her of it. Though the scars of her ordeal would never fully heal, she refused to let fear dictate the course of her life, vowing to forge ahead with newfound courage and resilience. Conclusion The tale of Sarah serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk beneath the surface of seemingly innocuous encounters. In a world where trust is easily exploited and appearances can be deceiving, it's imperative to remain vigilant and discerning in our interactions with others. Through Sarah's harrowing journey of survival and redemption, we are reminded of the indomitable strength of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable horror, inspiring us to never underestimate the power of hope in even the darkest of times.